in this series, we'll be making a horror game from the ground up and teaching you everything along the way. From researching, theorizing, and prototyping, to main menus, UI, and sound. Join me and follow along to become the master game developer you want to be. Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of creating a horror game from scratch. Today we're going to be using our whiteboard, or in this case I have a digital blackboard we're going to be using in order to outline all of the ghost system that we are going to be implementing. Depending on how long that takes, we might get into a little bit of the coding for the ghost system, we might not, but get your pencils out because we're about to design a system. Okay, let's get started. Normally I would do something physical and not digital. Um, so if you have a piece of paper or something in the real world, use that. I'm doing it this way so it's easier to record and you guys can actually follow along. So this is gonna be a, a lot more of a free form episode. This is gonna be very impromptu, uh, unscripted on everything because when you design a system, it isn't a formula. It's, it's searching your brain and coming up with problems and solving them follow along and you'll see what i'm talking about so the first thing i can think of when it comes to these ghosts is we're going to want to know how many are currently active um actually well, you know what we'll even take another step back we are going to want to spawn these things in so one mechanic they're going to have is we need to be able to spawn them and if we're going to spawn them, we're also, can I just, let's see, I've never used this program before. Ah, I can just press enter, okay. If we're going to spawn them, they're also gonna need spawn locations. Um, then to move about, if you remember, I just said we were going to use like a grid style system um, that uses little blocks and little basically segments, quadrants that the ghost can move through. So I'm gonna put, uh, quadrants in there um the quadrants are gonna have to have stuff in them uh that can be overlapped which means that in this case we're going to need an interface and that interface is going to be there so that way we can um interact with the objects so interfaced ghost interaction uh the quadrant is also gonna need a uh, collision box so let's go ahead and color code a little bit really quick uh first oh i guess i can't i don't know how this system works <laughs> we'll just use spacing instead there so spawn Spawn locations, quadrants, interface with a ghost interaction, quadrants need a collision box. Uh, we're gonna need stuff in the quadrant, so we're gonna need physics objects. Physics objects, forgot my dash. We're gonna need uh, sound. Oh, what are those called? They might just be called sounds. As dumb as that sounds, I, gen I genuinely think they might be called sounds. We're gonna need sounds, we're gonna need actual sounds. So we're gonna need the, the system version of sounds and then we're gonna need the actual sounds, uh, which we'll use the ghost interaction interface. Um, we are going to need to know how many ghosts are active. So in the game instance, which is basically, actually no, we'll do that in the level blueprint. In the level blueprint, we need to keep track of uh, how many ghosts active. Um, so to kind of explain a little bit about what we got going on here, I like this to be nice and even there. Um, Obviously, these two are very simple. We need to be able to spawn them and we need to have a place to spawn them. Uh, we need quadrants for them to move to and stuff to mess with in the quadrants. Um, the collision box is basically going to pull a node that says, these are the things I'm currently overlapping. 
So if we put stuff in the quadrant, it will be overlapping the collision box. Then using the uh, ghost interface, we can tell whatever it is to do the thing. So for example, if we want it to throw an object because it's a ghost that can throw, then it's gonna do a couple checks. Uh, quadrant collision box, you know, is it in there? And then it's gonna do the interface ghost interaction and throw the object. Uh, the physics objects are for throwing purposes. The sounds are in case it makes noises. Uh, the sounds to go with the sound system. The level blueprint is basically anything that is independent of that level. And in this case, how many ghosts are active is going to be independent of this level. Um, you could put it in a game instance, which is basically this overarching system that goes between levels. It's a really good way to store variables if you need to load several different levels. But in this case, uh, we don't really need that much power. We're just going for this one security room area. Uh, in the future, we might be able to become a little bit more dynamic with that. But for now, just putting it in the level blueprint is going to be fine. Um, oh, I don't want this. Get out of here. I guess I can. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, what else are we going to need in the level blueprint? We're going to need ambience. We're going to need... a max amount of ghosts. So that way, whenever we solve so many ghosts, we win, right? And we need to know that by having a max amount of ghosts. Um, spawn locations, I guess in this category, I can uh, basically do, cause if you remember, there is a system where, remember how I said there's a vent? There's a hallway and then it has to go through the vent. And to show that, essentially what's gonna happen is it's just gonna disappear. So we need a room, we'll call it the abyss room. We need an abyss room to teleport the ghosts temporarily. And then we're gonna need vent sounds. So are you kind of seeing how this works? I come up with the problems I'm imagining and I'm writing all these things down ahead of time. And then once I complete this list, we will go back and figure out how we're gonna break those systems down. Um, so I'm gonna complete this list and I'll bring you back. Okay, I filled out the list a little bit more and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over the spawning in the quadrants a little bit um, because essentially the reason those two are gonna be so important to us is because when we spawn the ghost, it's gonna have to know the quadrant path uh, immediately. Otherwise, it's not gonna do anything because it can't move forward if it doesn't have a set path already set. Um, I mean, we could technically choose like random quadrants and things of that nature, but that would be kind of pointless. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a spawner. It's going to be pretty simple. Um, literally what we're going to do is, uh, if this is the spawner, um, which I believe the node is literally a uh, spawn actor. So I'm not going to do that. Never mind. I've changed my mind. It's going to be too difficult. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So we're gonna spawn it, and when we spawn it, it needs a set of information. So I think what we're gonna do in the level blueprint, so over here, uh, this is the level blueprint. In the level blueprint, what we're gonna do is we're going to have the quadrants already in arrays, okay? So this is the array icon and it's gonna be quadrants. Quadrants. And whenever it spawns, it's already gonna be in a quadrant, okay? And what we're gonna do is on overlap. So when this gets overlapped, which means as soon as the actor is spawned in, it'll be overlapped we will have an event 
So we'll have like an event. And out of that event, we're gonna plug it in to a box that will be like, hey, uh, this is the array that you need to have going forward. So we'll set an array. We'll be like this array equals this array. This left array is one that we saved in the level blueprint. Whereas this right array is going to be the one we're sending, we're setting to the ghost. So we take the one we've already saved, this is a predetermined path, and we save it in the ghost's blueprint when he spawns because he overlapped this box. Now, he has an array of quadrants, okay? And so this is a quadrant, this is a quadrant, this is a quadrant. One, two, you know what? No, because I made such a big deal out of it last episode. Zero, one, two, there. These are our quadrants. Um, the first one in the list will obviously be zero. So whenever he goes to move, he's going to have a current quadrant. All right, current quadrant. So whenever he spawns, he needs to have his current quadrant, which will be zero, which is where he starts, right? So these are the same. And then when he gets the issue, the command to move forward, we're gonna take current quadrant, we're gonna add one to it, and we'll be able to pull that using the address one out of the array, because that'll be the second slot, and that will tell him Oh, look, I need to go to this quadrant now. So this is kind of the system I'm thinking whenever we go um, to the actual coding. Uh, yeah, I hope I hope this makes sense. Like I said, this is going to be very impromptu and crazy, uh, but this is what I'm thinking. And then obviously once he gets to this door or this one, this will be the door, right? So this is our door and he'll want to come inside. This is whenever we will either kill him or he'll kill us. So I guess we can have an additional quadrant inside the door, actually. It'll be like 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, and he'll wait there for just a moment. That'll give us time to kill it. And then maybe, you know, depending on the ghost, he'll stay here for longer or shorter periods of time. Um, which brings me to something I added earlier over here on the left, the tool interface. We're going to have to be able to interface with the ghost using tools. Uh, so then that's where we'll be able to either kill it. And if we don't kill it, so if we fail to identify it or the time limit that it's been in this box is officially up, basically, instead of telling it to go to a quadrant, we're then going to issue a custom event. And that custom event is going to be kill the player. And it's literally gonna be as simple as plugging it into a node. Then that node, I shouldn't have used red because red is an event. Here, we'll use blue. Pretend this is not red, it is officially blue there. And that node will literally just be go here. I forget the name of the node, but it's like go here and you can actually plug in the player pawn. So you can just get the player pawn. Yeah, that's a pawn and plug it in. And now it will go to the player, which means uh, I forgot something. The ghost needs to have a box around him as well. And if the ghost gets too close and our player pawn overlaps, this box that will initiate a death sequence and we'll go from there. So I think I officially have enough info here. I can start coding. I need to save this. We're going to use the snip tool. Snip tool is snip tool is God. Always save stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know a lot of you 
this is not what you're wanting out of a tutorial, but you have to realize this is part of the process. And I think since we're creating a game from scratch, it's important to show these things. Whenever these systems get so big and have to interact with each other, it's important to have as much information going in as possible, which is why I wanted to show you how I go about doing it. I think of as many problems as I can, and then start solving them before we even get in the code where we're probably gonna come across even more problems. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you dislike it. However, if you wanna support me, then I will have my Patreon below. It helps me create these free videos and free games. And uh, again, thanks, and I'll see you in the next episode.